Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Christopher's Factory. This is me trying to be more myself because people have told me that I come across as robotic in my videos and I'm very far from that in real life. So this is me being more myself, I guess. I had a lot of people on Instagram ask me how I designed this little case that I built for the windmill. Um, I wanted something that I could detach quickly, but that would hold all the electronics that work on the signals for the windmill and stuff. Um, but the point of this video is these threads, how I made these little threads and how I designed them in Fusion 360, because they're very, very easy to make. But if you've never seen this tool before, you might not know. So today we're just gonna do a super quick, super fast little design of a little carrying case, kind of like this, but more simplified, maybe for more general use, something that you can put your little trinkets and stuff in. So that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, so jumping right into it, we're gonna make a circle on our little XY plane here. We're gonna have it have a diameter of 80 and then another circle inside of it with a diameter of 70. We're gonna go ahead and finish that sketch and extrude the wall up 80 millimeters. This is gonna be the little cup in our design. And then we're gonna double click the first sketch in the timeline to go back to this sketch so that we can extrude the floor up three millimeters. And it's going to think that we're going back in the timeline, so we're just going to advance it a little bit to bring us up to speed. And then we're going to hide sketch one because I'm done with that now. So now we have our little cup. I'm going to go ahead and go into bodies and rename this our cup. And I'm going to create a new sketch on the top of it here by offsetting the outside by five. We're going to grab that new plane and extrude it down 20 millimeters. And it's going to think we want this to be part of the cup. But in reality, this is a new body. This is our lid. And I'm going to name it as such, lid. Perfect. So now I'm going to hide our cup just for a second here so that I can grab the top of this lid and extrude it up three millimeters so that it's closed. So now you can see we have our lid and our cup. Great. So now we're going to hide the lid just for a sec and we're going to go into create and click on the thread tool. We're gonna click the outside of the little face of our cup here. And if you've done, if you're just doing this for the first time, it's probably going to not be modeled and it's going to be full length. So what these are is model just shows whether or not you want the faces to actually be rendered. So if we're 3D printing this, we obviously do. People that don't want it rendered, this is just like a little graphic that's just pasted on the outside of your object. That's for if you're working on like a large project that has a million tiny screws, you don't wanna waste computing power rendering every single one. So this is just so that you can see from a glance, yes, this is a screw without it actually having to, you know, calculate all the faces and clearances and stuff. We don't need this to be full length because it really only needs to be the length of our lid, and that is 20 millimeters. And I forgot to click modeled there. There we go. So you can see it's starting to come to life. It's going to guess what size threads you want, and this is astute because I did want 80 millimeters. We're going to go into the designation here. This is the second number here, the 654321. That is the pitch of your threads. So that is how far apart each thread is from one another. So if we do big old M6 threads here, or six, six millimeter pitch threads here, I guess is what they would be called. You can see they're real chunky. And if we do one millimeter, they're really, really fine. I've found that 3D printers kind of have trouble with the really large threads and the really small threads. Um, the large threads are easier than the small threads, but you get to a point where it's just, it's just too fine. So I usually shoot somewhere in the middle. Okay, class, direction, we don't need to mess with any of that. We are going to make sure remember size is checked because we want to do the same thread on our lid here in a second. So we're done with that, so we can click OK. We're going to swap whipped object is hidden, and we're going to do the threads on the inside of the lid here. Everything's going to be the exact same, 20 millimeters. This one, it doesn't matter if it's full length or not because we are doing the full length, but it does also happen to be 20 millimeters. We want to make sure everything's the same, and we are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the layout grid because it's getting in my way now. Okay, so now our little cup and lid is starting to come to life. The next thing that we're gonna to do to make sure everything is good is we're gonna go into inspect and section analysis. And we're gonna click on either of these two planes here just so that we can see the inside. And once we do that, we're gonna see that there's some overlap here. Now this isn't that big of a problem, but I'm kind of weird about this. I wanna make sure everything is right on the first try. So what I'm gonna do just to make sure that I don't screw myself up is I'm gonna press M to open the move menu, make sure that this is selected. We're gonna go move type rotate along the axis of the cylinder there. And we're gonna rotate this probably 120 degrees. That's looking just about right. Perfect, so we're gonna hit okay here. And you can see there is some clearance because Fusion 360 is smart enough to know that you are going to need clearance if you have two threads. 
um, but that's not going to be enough for a 3D printer. So I'll show you the next thing that we're going to do. We're going to open up the analyses here. We're going to hide the first section analysis that we did, and we're going to do a second one from the top down. This is because I want to see which feature is thicker, because I'm going to do some offsetting here of the faces, and I want to be taking chunks out of the side that is thicker. I want to be removing from where we have more material to remove from. So it's looking just from an eyeball that that's going to be the lid. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK just so that stays there, but then I'm going to hide it. We're going to start working on the lid here. So if you see these threads, they have sort of a bottom face and a top face. We're going to want to offset both of those back. Okay, we're going to offset them out from the center. And this is really easy to do. All we have to do is click on the bottom threads and the top threads. It's going to go ahead and select it all the way up because it's one long face. We're going to press Q. That is the offset face shortcut. And we're going to do negative 0.25 millimeters. This is just a guess just from doing this enough. Usually somewhere in the range of, you know, 0.1 for really fine threads and 0.4 or so for really thick threads is right. And we're right in the middle of those. So we're going to go ahead and do negative 0.25 um, and we're going to review the cup and open up our first section analysis just to see what this looks like. And this is looking pretty good. I'm thinking that that will be just enough clearance uh, to work with a 3D print. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I want to do? I think that that's going to be dandy. I think that's going to be just fine. So I will print this right now and we will see how it turned out. Actually, real last thing that we're going to do here is I'm going to add a couple little fillets on the edges just to make this look nice. These don't really do anything, um, but they do help with elephant's foot a little bit if you're going to be 3D printing these. Okay, after a few short hours, I finished printing the little cup lid case. I made it a little bit shorter just so that I could finish this video by the end of the night. Uh, and on this side, I embossed my logo one layer down into it and then colored it in with a Sharpie. It doesn't look that great, but I wanted to try it anyway. So you can see these threads really mesh just perfectly. Um, it's really nice. The first time you do this, the first time you screw them into each other, you might hear kind of a scraping or it might be kind of hard. Um, it's just scraping away the tolerances and then it'll get easier every time you do it after that. Um, so long as you have enough clearance to even scrape away the excess in the first place. Um, one thing that I should mention is the way that I designed this, it takes a comically long time to finish screwing it in. And something interesting to note, because the pitch of the threads, the distance between them, is basically, well, that's the same as the distance that it travels in one rotation. So we used three millimeter pitch threads for an extent of 20 millimeters, which means that it takes three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, you know, six or seven spins, full spins of this very large base to get it to enter in all the way. So it's, you, you could probably use less than that for something this big, honestly, probably three spins would be fine. Um, but just something to note, something that I found interesting and something that I learned from this video. And I hope that you learned something as well. If you want either this stubby little Mario tube looking case or the one that we designed uh, in Fusion 360 today, those will both be available on my Thingiverse for free. Uh, the links to those will be in the description of this video. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.